Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Today, we are finally going to be finishing off the Entity Component System, with any luck at all. And we're going to be taking on possibly the most difficult challenge so far, and that is properly updating the systems. So, let's go straight into it. To get started, we're going to warm up by removing the system, the only other method we have yet to implement. So we're going to go ahead and create void ECS remove system, and this is going to be a little bit different from all the other removes that we've done, and you'll see why in just a second. But for now, we're going to go through the list, i32 equals 0, i is less than systems.size, i++, there we go. And what we're going to do is really straightforward. If address of system equals systems sub i, and we want the address of system because systems are pointers. So we take the address of system to get the pointer. And if this is the same, we are not going to be doing the swap trick. Why? Because here, the order that we update the systems actually is important. That defines something about the logic of how well, the game logic works. If we do that out of order, the whole thing could break down and things could be weird. So we want to keep the order. So to do this, we're instead going to do this the slightly slower way. Shouldn't be a big deal, but it's going to be systems. We're going to call the erase method. And this is a little odd because it involves an iterator. So systems.begin, excuse me. So we'll take the start of that and we'll add the index. That should erase at our current index, and then we can just return. That I'll return true if we erase and return false if we don't erase. Just going along with our current remove systems. Or not system. Just going along with our current remove convention. And there we go. So the time has come. Let's start working on update systems. Now, there's two distinct cases we're going to have for this. Well, for, I mean, first of all, obviously, in all cases, we're going to have to iterate through every single system, because otherwise, you know, we're not updating all the systems. So let's start with that. We're going to iterate i equals 0, i is less than systems.size. In fact, I could have copied the iteration we just did, but oh well. <laughs> and yeah, so we have two distinct cases. One is where our system has only one component type. So what I'm going to do is, if you remember from when we wrote ECS system, we have this get component types method. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say a con I'm going to set a const array of uint32. It's going to be get by reference, and I'm going to call it component types, and it's going to equal that method. Though of course we're going to have to call systems sub i to access it. There we go. So, but remember, the system is by pointer, so we need to use arrow notation to get the component types. So let's handle the easy case first. If we have only one component type, component types dot size is one, then we can handle the easy case. Otherwise, we have the significantly more difficult and hellish case. But like I said, we're going to start with the simple case. So in the simple case, we need to invoke our dynamic type system once again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some methods. Actually, I think I can probably copy and paste from somewhere. Yeah, I can. So we're going to get the type, and we're going to just need the component ID, which is going to be component types sub zero. It's safe to do that because we know at this point there's only one component. And we're also going to need the array of components for this. So. I'm going to get this by reference, the array of uint8 reference. I'll call it, don't have a good name for it, so I'll just again call it array. And that's going to equal components sub component types sub zero. So great, we know what type it is, we have the array. We're going to do a paradigm we've seen before, and I may be able to copy somewhere if I can find it quickly enough. If not, I'll just write it out again. And I cannot find it quickly enough, but we've seen this paradigm again. Or before. What we want to do is we just want to go through the array, i is 0, i is less than array.size, and we're going to add 
the type size. So we're going to go through every single component in the array. And with that, all we have to do is call the system's update components method with that particular, well, component. So systems i, we're going to update the components, and we're going to pass in the delta. We already have the delta as a parameter, so that's all taken care of. And we also need the components double pointer. So what we're going to do, say array sub index, we're going to take the address of this, cast that to a base ECS component pointer. And in fact, to make this a little bit less confusing, I'm just going to set separate this. So base ECS component pointer component equals this. So cool, we've retrieved the component from the array. And lastly, we can take the address of that and pass it to the components. In this case, we're not going to really need to take advantage of the double pointer shenanigans because we only do have one component. And that's it. This is all we need to do in the case of one component. It's very... Well, it's, it's reasonably straightforward. The only real complexity here is just using our dynamic type system properly. But beyond that, this is a pretty straightforward case. Then there's the other case. So because this case is more difficult, I'm going to wrap it in its own method. So we're going to have void update system, not system, a single system with multiple components. And this is going to take in the delta. Well, actually, also, it's going to, first of all, it's going to take in the index, of course. It's also going to take in this component types reference because we already have it, so why not pass it? And lastly, we're going to need some way of fueling this double pointer that I still have highlighted, the, yeah, the double pointer to the components. So I'm going to have an array of base component pointer, and I'll pass it by reference, and this is going to be called component param. Sure. In this way, we aren't allocating and deallocating this for every single system we update. We can have a single array in our update system method right here. And we can just pass this as a parameter for every single system we need to update. So we have the memory. We don't need to allocate and reallocate for every single system. And at the end of the system's updating, that'll get freed. So that's just a little bit nicer memory management. That's the reason we're doing that. So yeah, now let's go forward. In the update systems of multiple components, I'm going to actually format this a little differently. Just I think that's a little bit nicer. And I'll do whatever. That's good. <laughs> and in principle, we're going to do something really similar. And f well, actually, before I even do that, I want to actually call the method. That's important. So the index is i, the delta is delta, the component types is our component types array, which we initialize up here outside of the if statement for this very reason. And lastly, the component params array. To begin with, we're going to want to make sure component params is big enough to, well, hold all of this. So I'm just going to say resize math max of however big it is currently. So it's going to resize to either however big it is right now, or if that isn't big enough, then we're going to say component types dot size. Technically, we could do this up here, and maybe that might be a little nicer, but, you know, why not? It, it doesn't particularly make a difference, and I think I forgot a closing parent. I did! Yeah, I gotta be careful of those. So to start with, I'm gonna copy what I have for updating a single component, because I mean, in principle, it's similar. We're doing the same sort of logic. It's just now there's more than one component. That makes the logic a little bit more confusing and a little bit more tricky. Firstly, right now we're sending a single component to the system, which is wrong. We're going to send the... Actually, this is supposed to be index. Excuse me. So that's wrong. And yeah, I made the same mistake here. And actually here, I'm using the wrong iterator variable. This should be j because I already used i. So that's, yeah, that should fix it. So change these to j and this to j. That should be OK. Yeah, that is correct, I think. So great, now we have 
Now we're back to the problem of multiple components. So like I said, we have this component, but this is not enough. This is not enough to fuel this double pointer to components. Really? Well, for the obvious reason, we have multiple components. So to begin with, I'm going to go to component param. I'm going to go to index 0 because that's where our component type is coming from. And I'm going to set that equal to component. In fact, I don't even need this anymore. I can just directly set this to component. Straightforward enough, right? So once I've done that, now I have to look at the entity itself to see if it has the rest of the components and add them to the array. Because here's the thing, if the entity is missing one of these components, then this system isn't supposed to care about it. So we're going to have to skip over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a J iterator. J is less than component types dot size. I'm going to go through all the components. And to start with, I'm going to say if j is equal to 0, then we're just going to continue. You might wonder, hey, Benny, why don't I just start j at 1 then? And you'll see in a few minutes. I'll put it like that. So, of course, if we're going to be querying the entity, we're going to need to actually, you know, access the entity. So what I'm going to do is under our header, as always, we have our handled entity method, so I'm going to take advantage of this to get access to the entity. I'm going to have this array of pairs. I'm going to call it entity components, sure. And that's going to equal handle to entity. And once again, I'm going to take advantage of the component parameter, or the components, knowing about the entity. So I've, yeah, that's a pointer, so I'm going to access by arrow notation. That components entity is what I'm going to want to look through. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say component params I'm going to index j that is going to be equal to basically we're going to want to find the component on the entity. So I'm going to do it with get component internal for now. And component internal takes the entity components and the component ID. So we have the entity components luckily enough. Now we just need the component ID, which thankfully is also pretty easy to get. It's component types sub J. So that's great. We now know what the component is. But wait, this is not entirely sound yet. This could be a null pointer. What if the entity does not have this? So if this new component parameter is null, then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say, Okay, this obviously this entity does not have all the components. We don't need to update it. We need to basically skip. So what I'm going to do to achieve this, I'm going to have a boolean is valid, which starts off equal to true. If we find there's a particular component that the entity is missing, then we're going to say, okay, this is not a valid entity, and we're going to stop trying to find all the components. And finally, right here, we're going to check if we are a valid entity, then that's great. We can safely update the components. We're going to want to change the parameters in a second, but that's fine. And if not, we're just going to fall through and continue on to the next entity. So, now that we're updating components, this should be all we need left, so we're going to want to pass in the address of component param sub zero. Sub zero yes, because that should be everything. And with all that, this should be a logically correct way of updating systems with multiple components. Just to be clear, we're going through, we're starting with the first component. For every component in that array, we're finding the entity attached to it. If that entity has all the remaining components that we're interested in, then we are updating it. Otherwise, we're skipping it and just continuing on. Now, at this point, you might fairly ask, Hey Benny, what's the big deal? Why have you been blowing this up so much? This doesn't seem that bad. And if that's you, then I have to say, Awesome! That means I have done my job really well. Because there is a subtle issue that we've been addressing. Not just in this method, not just in this class, but throughout the entire ECS system. That is the issue of cache behavior. 
how will this code behave on the CPU cache? And granted, we haven't done a perfect job. We've just designed this so that this could potentially behave really well with the CPU cache. And that's important because actually that's a limiting factor. If you look at statistics on the number of entities and components and so forth that games use at once from about the early 2000s up to now, the number hasn't changed that much. And a lot of that's because of cache behavior, especially in the normal, I guess you might call the system of entities and components, the old Unity way or the 3D game engine tutorial way. Doing it like that has terrible cache behavior. It just, you launch all over the memory searching for the various entities and components that you need. And it just does, it puts a limit on how much entities and components you can have in your world. It puts a limit on your world size. So, and one of the big advantages of this newer way is it can potentially behave really well with the cache in the case of multiple components. It's really tricky to pull off though, but it can be done. That is what we have done here. You notice that in the case of one component, what are we doing? We're iterating through a straight array and just updating the system one at a time. That's essentially optimal cache behavior. It's a linear array, it's going through memory in order and updating. So for one component, we're pretty close to cache optimal. For multiple components though, that's where you really want to be able to have good cache behavior, but that's really tricky. We're not doing a terrible job, we're going through a single array, and that's still good, but now we have the issue of there's other arrays for all the other components in the entity, and the fact that we're looking up the entity itself. So for our purposes, we're not going to try to make this thing cache perfect. That's definitely its own can of worms, and for all we know, all the games we make might do just fine with this not quite perfect cache usage anyways, so it could just be a huge waste of effort. But I want you to know that is a potential limit in your game design. This might limit what you can do in your game if this isn't working really well with the cache. And I also want you to know that the way we've done it, you can potentially resolve that. You can make this work really, really well with the cache, even if we aren't doing it, at least not in this particular video. Maybe we'll come back to it if the game does prove to have this as a limit. But yeah, but we are going to do some things to minimize the risk of cache usage becoming an issue. How can we do that? What can we do to improve the cache usage of this method that's still relatively low effort? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you in the next video where we will be concluding the Entity Component System. Thank you, see you then. As always, if you are interested in talking more with me or other like-minded people, please join the Benny Discord. It is an awesome community. If you're interested in supporting these videos or just finding out right now, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You can get early access to videos, you can get video notes and bonus materials, you can get extra roles on Discord, you could even get a special thanks in these videos. Thank you very much to all my patrons for being the awesome badasses that you are. And a very special thank you to the people listed in the video description. You all are awesome. Thank you very much, and I will see you all in the next video.